guys, I'm Nadia, um, I'm your person behind Cottage Notebook and today I thought we could take a look at some of the things that I have from Woolen. Um, I didn't get to shop very much but I do really like what I bought so um, all are what I was given. So this is easier than me doing um, a series of blog posts so bear with me because I don't do YouTube very often. Um, but first up, I don't know if you guys saw these. These are the gauge squares from Woolen. I really like these. And um, I really like the townhouse yarn ones as well. They're square and they have like the L-shaped gauge thing. Um, these are really, really, really cool. Um, also, I don't know if you guys managed to see these, but that Woolen had these pins. Aren't they great? I'll try and get the camera to zoom in. Them. Um, I really love that this is actually the top of the um, Havenny Bridge just here and um, I think I actually really like the weight of these things they're really really lovely and um, I didn't manage to pick up uh, the This Is Knit or Townhouse pins while I was there so um, Jenny get on that. <laughs> um, this is also the Woolen Show programme and it's really hot here today so the sun is a little bit funny um this is the woolen show program and um this cover shot is from um the balton issue that i did with lisa with um Carofella's shawl i really really like this one um but in the show program there are two patterns uh, one from um, Carol Feller, who designed the Balsamus shawl in the Mua. Um, and the other one is from Emer, who's playing with fibre. Who, uh, let's see, he's got this one. This Baltima. And um, it is a vortex shaped shawl with uh, interse in intersecting garter stitch and lace panels. And it's really beautiful. Um, you can hear Carol and Lisa discussing the whole pattern and how it came together um, in their YouTube video. It was an IG Live and it's over on the Woolen YouTube channel. And if reading is more your thing, there are a series of blog posts both with um, Woolen and uh, Carol Feller over on carolfeller.com where she talks about the shawl design, where it came together, where the name come, came from how we did the photo shoot is over on Woolen and uh, I think there's a blog post on my blog too um, but it's a really simple um, really simple shawl it can be like worn in a number of ways and uh, Lisa is absolutely gorgeous to model um, I have so much fun photographing her need to do that again um, there's also uh, if you guys have been following um, Carol online. Um, she has an exclusive extract from um, Echoes of Heather and Stone, which is her new book. And um, there are some fabulous designs in there. Uh, from There was a lot of the designers who were in this book were actually at Woolen. Um, and there are some gorgeous photographs, which I can't show you. Um, the other pattern I wanted to show you, which is really fun and interesting and um, always makes me think of David Bowie, uh, is this one here from Playing With Fibre, which is Vicky Played With Yarn. And it's a really fun um, colour play shawl using the um, Studio Donegal Darnie, which was launched at Woolen by Studio Donegal and it is absolutely gorgeous. It is so soft. And um, it is lamb's wool, I believe, looking at the show program, because I can't remember. But um, yes, it was, uh, yeah, and the sponsorship was with Studio Donegal for Darnie and with Helen McCabe for her pattern notes and suggestions. Um, but the designer is um, Ema Early, and she is playing with fiber over on um, Ravelry, and she has some beautiful designs. Um, I really, really like it. She's lovely. Um, it is, the thing about this is that it is more about colour play um, than anything else. And I really, really, really love how it, if you go, 
this is a matte thing, but if you're, if you're kind of looking at it, you can see the, the intricacies moving in and out, and they look like sound waves to me, which is not, I'm sure not what Emer was suggesting, but um, to me, it's like David Bowie in a scarf, otherwise a matte is great. Um, so that was the Woolen Show program. Um, the other thing that I managed to pick up at Woolen was this here, which is from Kachin Biog, and the button in there is mine, but um, the, let me show you, actually, doo -doo -doo, in a very professional way, see, this comes out, this opens, and this can be literally anything, um, but what it comes with is um, beautiful stitch markers like these, this is also from um, Kachin Biog, and I'll pop show notes in the links. I will pop the links in show notes. You can see I'm doing really well this morning. Um, but she had, like I bought this one because it had gorgeous little seashells. Um, and because a lot of what I do on Instagram is um, photographs from the beach and um, life on an Irish beach. Um, and I really, really love this. This bracelet as well has magnetic closures like this. So it's really handy for um, it's really handy for uh, if you want to wear it while you're knitting and then you suddenly need a stitch marker you just like pop one off and um, these are <laughs> it was kind of selfish but uh, this is also they're really Instagrammable um, because like these scattered along the backdrop would be fab I absolutely love them. Um, and then Lisa, for my birthday, gave me a little button pendant, which I don't have right here. Um, but it's a gorgeous little pendant with a, a little stir, um, silver button, and it's fab. And I love the things that Uncotching Bug makes. So um, the other good thing about these is that they are, uh, they're not yarn. And I was feeling a little bit yarn overwhelmed. Um, so on the first day I was looking at these, and then on the second day I was planning to go shopping. Um, that didn't happen because Saturday was crazy <laughs> and uh, for those of you who don't know because um, I'm assuming everybody knows what Woolen is uh, Woolen is Dublin's uh, yarn festival and it was in its first year and we had it in the Alsa sports complex in Swords and um, it was perfect location for people who wanted to fly in for the day and then fly home but also if you needed to get there by a public transport you didn't need to drive the complex um, was held on three floors and it had a bar um, area where you could uh, overlook all of the uh, marketplace and there was also a catwalk which ran the entire way around the marketplace so you could um, also get views of the entire marketplace from above and it was absolutely fabulous. Um, and it was really easy to spot Countess of Blaze or anyone who worked with her because they were all in full costume for the entire event, it was wonderful. Um, she made me laugh a lot, I love her. Um, and also Joe from Shiny Bees. Hi, it was lovely to see you in person. Um, and all of the podcasters, actually, it was lovely to actually see your faces um, and the bloggers as well, because I don't often um, get to see the person behind the accounts, and it was lovely. Um, the other thing that I got to do was these are the woolen tote bags, and these are awesome because they have a really nice shape to them, um, and they're 100% organic cotton. Um, and they're actually holding uh, my whips at the moment. Um, not yarn purchases from Woolen, I wish that was true, but if I stand up, you can see these have a really cool, what's that like? A really cool um, edge to them. And they also, because of how they're cut, they, um, they stand up really, really well on their own. Um, and uh, these guys were given to, um, Press. They formed part of the press packs along with Studio Didn't Go All Darny, um, so you could try it out. Um, and they also got the woolen pin and this here. And yeah, the let me show you what the press badges are because I have them clipped in my very fancy um, desk caddy. But the woolen press packs, uh, press badges. Um, they were, yes, they were made by Lisa, 
uh, but they, I ruined them by my handwriting, but um, <laughs> the uh, press badges were for um, admittance, but also to let vendors and stuff know that you actually were part of the press, so that when they're talking to you, they use whatever name they want to be represented by, um, or they could ask you to come back later. Um, so it's also, the, the badges do two things. Uh, one is, obviously, anyone who's press has entry into the event, um, but also so that other people can find you if they may not know what you look like and also to protect the vendors. So, um, fun little guys. And I've actually kept mine. <laughs> I don't think I asked anybody to return them, but you see, always learning for next year, right? Um, so yeah, well, and I also have, it has been washed, <laughs> new woolen t-shirts. Um, these were for uh, volunteers and people staffing the event and um, so there actually aren't that many of these. Um, I'm not sure if you can buy them and if you can they will be with the woolen merchandise which is on thisisknit.ie. Um, yeah I probably should have talked to Lisa before doing this but um, the t-shirts the were for everyone at the event so if you're looking at um, Kate's amazing photography, Kate from A Playful Day did the photographs for um, Woolen. She did two things. Um, she was there as part of the Make Good Feel Good campaign and um, you can read all about that over on uh, Kate's blog at Playful Day. And um, also you can pop over to woolen.com forward slash in pictures and you can see all of the amazing things from the event. Um, you'll also probably see loads of hashtags and um, make it feel good um, of people's images on Instagram because all of them have gone live now and they are just fantastic. Um, I really can't describe what that was like. The feeling was just wonderful. Like people just felt comfortable. They um, could share their stories and they just felt seen. Um, there w were people who would cry um, just because they were sharing something that was really personal with all of us and um, yeah it was really lovely it was a lovely lovely event um, I'm glad that we did that uh, then um, and that was all Kate by the way she organized everything um, she she's just an amazing photographer people just felt comfortable in front of the camera with her um, you can read everything under the hashtag uh, make it feel good um, on Instagram as well if you want independent <laughs> um, views. I loved working with Kate, I'd happily do it again. Um, the other thing, yes, Kate, the other thing Kate did was uh, she delivered a workshop, um, workshop, a lecture during uh, Woolen um, on smartphone photography and it was amazing um, and it wasn't long enough. An hour is not long enough, it needs to be longer. Um, I have questions, <laughs> um, but I always have questions, um, and it was it was really really good. And I think she has a few more of those planned. I'm not sure, but if you pop over to a playful day, um, I'm sure all of her information will be there, so you can sign up to her newsletter, and um, to know when she's doing more events like that. And my advice, if you get the chance, go because she's just full of wonderful information. Um, the other thing she did was impromptu photographs. So you can see a lot of the staff and um, volunteers and um, photographs from the event and the impromptu sessions on Woolen. So go do that if you haven't. Um, some beautiful shots in the marketplace as well um, and some vendor shots as well. They're really beautiful. And the other thing that we got to do, oh, the Yarn in Ireland panel. Um, the audio recording for the Yarn in Ireland panel is up on cottagenotebook.ie forward slash listen. There's also an audio recording of the live event um, on YouTube as well. You can just click to the side. Um, and it has, it features um, the wonderful Adele McBride who uh, runs Knitfield. Um, and she is a knitwear designer from a different route than what we would kind of be used to on um, like Book Through Ravelry, that kind of thing as an independent. Um, Adele studied knitwear design and she was also a tutor on Craft Masters and um, RTE and she also won a few awards. So if you pop over to the uh, cottagenotebook.ie forward slash listen, you'll find the Iron and Ireland panel and you can hear um, her talk about her stories or her uh, career progress um, in yarn in Ireland. And also on that audio, audio there is um, the wonderful Cara Feller 
new designed shoes. Um, there is Jeremy Cummings who uh, runs S Twist Wool and he's doing some amazing things. Um, I think a lot of the audio snippets I have at the moment are from uh, Jeremy. Um, and then there's also the lovely Johnny Shields who runs spinningwheels.ie who is a third generation um, wheelwright and um, wheelwright? Wheelwright? Um, and um, he's a little bit nervous so um, a, a lot of, um, I think he found his comfort zone down with the Irish Guild of Weaver Spinners Dyers um, where he got, where he was actually spinning his wheel and you got to try it and then you got to um, talk to him on a one-on-one. -on -one. He is amazingly good at that. Um, and he hails from Donegal as does Adele. So I think they were kind of outranking us. Might look at that next year. <laughs> um, but they did a wonderful job and thank you so much for your time. It was really, really wonderful. Um, and it was kind of an honour to share the stage with you guys. Um, the I say M a lot, which you probably don't realise from the audio recordings, but I'm not going to edit the YouTube video too much. So that was kind of woolen. Um, I think if you have any questions, you can get me on nadia at cottagenotebook.ie or any problems with audio recordings or anything like that. Um, there was also a wonderful, um, I want to say, talk by Kate Davies uh, on Handy Woman and it looks absolutely amazing. Um, so do pop over if you haven't. Uh, just, I think she had everyone in tears, but it was really, really wonderful and such feelings of um, love and support in that room. It was wonderful. Um, I'm really, really glad I got to uh, join in that um, that talk. Uh, I don't want to give too much away because that was a paid for talk, so I'm not too sure what I can talk So one of the fun things that I thought we could do uh, is have a look at my whips because my hand is all better now. And uh, for those of you who said that um, it was continuous typing and all of that, you're completely right. Um, if you could see the hours that I logged at a laptop uh, in the month, month prior to uh, Woolen with all of the blog posts and stuff that I was doing um, for uh, myself and other people and trying to get the podcast out and everything, um, you're completely right, it was typing because the week of Woolen, I, I wasn't at a laptop, so I wasn't sitting there typing, I was actually up and moving around and yeah, perfectly fine. Um, so you were right. Hail you guys. Um, so I thought I could show you what I was doing. So because uh, if you follow me on Instagram, by the way, no, I haven't put the sleeve back on. Um, <laughs> the, uh, one of the things that I've been doing is crochet because I find that if my, um, if here is, is really, really sore, I can crochet with this hand and it's absolutely fine and it's kind of relaxing. So for the first time in forever, I've made a crochet garment. So um, this is with the fantastic Malabrigo Rios, which has a super wash finish, can you see it? Uh, that's the back, sexy back, I know, right? Um, and the front. So it's for kind of summertime in the evenings, you know, when you're at the beach, so you can put like a vest, a colored vest underneath. Um, and I can't remember right now where, what the pattern is, but I will link to it in the show notes. And this is just awesome. I just love how you can see, see through it. Um, the reason why I went with Rios instead of linen and that kind of thing is I wanted something a little bit heavier um, because the breeze on this beach is just unbelievable, which you can see from the photographs if you're on Instagram. Um, and also, my daughter is has kind of funny allergies to um, wool and especially alpaca that anything with a long kind of staple in it and um, I love alpaca so this is her DTP um, but when I hold her uh, she'll get like a rash where, where she was and um, so I try to stick to things that have a super wash finish or are really smooth and I don't like working with cotton so with the exception of Spud and Chloe because that cotton was gorgeous um, and I haven't found a cotton that I really, really love, but I haven't tried a lot of hand dyed um, cotton, so don't hold me to that. Um, you may find by September that I have fallen in love with a cotton from a hand dyer. Um, I just find it's really sore to work with, but whatever way, I think 
the splitting Chloe one was uh, like a worsted one. Um, but I'm not sure where you can get that in Ireland now. Because uh, that used to be, and this is never that anymore. Um, the best thing about this was that you actually have to show you this because I was blown away by this. But that's because I'm predominantly a knitter and I can hear Ava Nee laughing right now. But if I hold this up like this, can you see the bottom okay, on that? So to me, that looks very like a gorgeous knitted trim on the bottom, but it's not. It's actually um, crochet, single crochets worked into the back of the stitch. Um, and it gives you this beautiful stretchy kind of finish. But the garment, the pattern is written as a step-by-step -step guide to um, how to make one that will fit you, uh, which I absolutely love because Again, I don't crochet, so the thought of doing an entire garment um, with crochet kind of, I just kind of went, right, I can't knit, what can I do? Um, and this flew off the hook. I think I made this entire thing in the space of a week um, and I was getting ready for a woolen at that point, so like that, that's really cool. Um, and this is, there's half um, a skein here of Rios, so about three skeins was enough to do it in my size, which is awesome. Um, and it's, what I like about it, because it's crochet as opposed to knitted, if this was three skeins of Rios um, knitted, it would feel a lot heavier. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I, I love this. I also love the colouring in the Malabrigo Rios sample. I dive into my bag. So, after woolen, uh, I took a week off and I did some photo experiments, which you can see as a photo walk. Uh, they're over on Instagram if you're interested. But I got really into photography and using a macro lens and um, and also a distance lens with a stabilizer. On I use a Casio. Uh, no, I use a Canon. Um, you can tell it's my husband's camera because I can't think. But I was like, oh. I've got my creativity back. I wonder if I can knit. So I went to my huge whip pile and it's huge. I have like 18 whips um, that I really need to either frog or finish, but <laughs> including an Akoya for Carol. Hi. Um, but this is um, abalone. And if you've been following me, you can see that this is actually getting bigger. Um, and this is Drops Alpaca. And yes, I can only work on it when my daughter isn't around. And yes, uh, I can't wear it when my daughter is around. But this is really selfish. Um, it's more therapeutic knitting because it's just, I'm after you work the bottom. The pattern's kind of old, I think. It's been out a while. Um, after you work the bottom is shaped, it's scalloped, uh, which is kind of hard to see because the alpaca is rolling without the, the edging. Um, but the, the bottom is kind of shaped like that and then um, it's 40 centimetres of straight stocking stitch. So you don't need to think, there's no increasing, there's no decreasing, there's nothing. You just work straight to the arm armholes. And that was all my brain was fit for after woolen. So I've been trying to get back into the habit of fitting knitting time into my week. Um, and it's working. Uh, a lot like because what's happening is my phone is dying and I'm putting it on charge and then um, going outside to enjoy the garden that we're building and um, the knitting is getting knit as a result. Um, this fabric is, is absolutely fab and it is 3.5 millimeters and these are, for those of you who want to know, these are Knit Pro Dreams. Um, I have both high highs and Knit Pro, and depending on what I'm using, I will use different tips. And I love the, I have the high high sharps, and I love their tip. But um, with alpaca, I find that they can slip off, whilst the bamboo in this heat has a little bit of a grip. So that's why I'm using those. Um, so I'm really surprised, and it's kind of, it feels a little bit like I'm back in the knitting world because I'm actually knitting rather than just talking about knitting. Um, but if any of you want to see the, uh, 
kind of Instagram lives. I don't record them, I don't save them. Um, but I do try to pop on at least once a week. And last week, because I wasn't working as much, um, I have done some on knitting, some on wool, and some on the greenhouse and um, garden here at the cottage. Um, so if you want to see those, you're gonna have to follow me on uh, Instagram. Um, and I'm a bit impromptu about it. I've been doing it more in the morning than I have been doing throughout the day. Um, and morning Irish time, sorry. Sorry, Fran, it's very early for you. Um, but yeah, that's kind of an update from Here's the Cottage. And I thought this would be much easier than trying to write it all out and doing the photography. So if you want to follow me, you can on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook as Cottage Notebook. And um, I do have a Patreon account now for subscribers, which is helping to fund the podcast, uh, which has interviews with designers such as Kerry Westman, Carol Feller, Willie Wormhead, Willie's great, she's done too. Um, she was the launch of both season one and season two, so we've got a little bit of a rhythm going there. <laughs> um, the, there are up and coming designers as well, and there are also written interviews on the blog from independent dyers. Um, and the next podcast that will go live after the Iron and Iron panel is with the lovely Emma from uh, Willie Mammoth Fibres. So you can follow me from that. And until then, bye.